and welcome to the fourth and final game of the evening. Up this time is Bat Boy. Ryosuke isn't just your regular high school kid. He and his fellow sports star friends uh, seriously battle against the forces of evil, uh, including the invading forces of Lord Vicious. Hellbent on holding sinister athletic events for his own amusement, Ryosuke is Bat Boy. Like, um, play as Bat Boy in this 2D siding, uh, side-scrolling action platformer in which the interdimensional mage Lord Vicious has brainwashed Bat Boy's fellow teammates in order to participate in the Trials of Darkness. This is bolded for some reason. <laughs> um, a heinously brutal series of athletic events. It's up to Bat Boy to team up with the mouthy crow Garrow. Okay, we have a crow named Wolf. <laughs> I've heard, I've seen uh, worse. Mm. It can uh, be other things, but it's usually Wolf, yeah. Like, what's it in relation to birds? I don't know if there's a specific one for birds. Anyway, uh, traversing a hostile world to free the minds of his sports hero teammates and learn their skills before they fall victim to the trials. Along the way, Bat Boy will encounter all manner of characters, some allies, most not, as he fights his way through the bad guys in a variety of levels until reaching the final confrontation with Lord Vicious. Again, highlighted. Yeah, it's highlighted for the same reason that they always uh, bold or highlight the uh, trademark names in old stuff. Mm-hmm. Because we're right. stupid. And, so, and probably not old stuff. It's like for legal reasons or some shit. They can't use TM because it's probably not actually copyrighted. Well, I'm like... All that aside... Yeah, so Bat Boy is an 8-bit styled platforming game um, modeled after the classics. Uh, in this case, speci like, it's specifically um, Capcom here. Like, there's a lot of uh, Disney, especially DuckTales here. Um, but the main inspiration, Mega Man. Hmm. Like, oh, so, a lot of Mega Man yeah, here. Yeah, that, that is a pretty Mega Man-ass jumping pose and stuff. Uh -huh. Also, collection of themed bosses. And guess what you do when you beat one of them? You, you get some kind of power related to them. Probably. You do. Like Who could have ever have thought? Yeah. Like, some more uh, themed than others. Well, some of these guys are more themed than others, I think. Yeah, they're, they're all... Th they are all themed. You Is know, the lady a freaking uh, field hockey player? Uh, the, the, maybe. The, sorry, not lady. The one with the long hair and huge V glasses. I don't remember. Like, I'll be honest. Like, I barely remember the, a lot of the teammates. I can't like, tell her, but her stick looks kind of like a field hockey stick. Oh, Queria? Like, ah, uh, jeez. I think she was tennis. She, then, like, anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, as far as modern inspirations, Shovel Knight. Like, you know, you can see a lot of Shovel Knight in this game as well. Yeah, it cheats a little more than Shovel Knight did in some ways, but... Yeah. It's also, um... I suppose my biggest problem with the game is it's a bit more unpolished than, say, Shovel Knight was. I don't know, it's like... There were a few times when the, when the enemies wigged out, or when I left a screen, it's... It, uh... Warped me to another place... I still don't know what happened with that. Mm -hmm. but. Also, it's a little talkier, at least in the cutscenes. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. Which is only notable because I think Shovel Knight actually put in a significant amount of work into not being talky and only and conveying stuff in other ways when it could. Yeah. So, so as the name and, you know, as you can see, uh, the main method of attack is a bat. Like, which is an interesting uh, case of affairs. Um, yes, well, you can do the obvious thing with, with the bat. You know, that is, you club uh, your enemies with them. And yeah, uh, you know, your beginning moves are pretty simple. You move, you jump, and you attack. Um, and but your attack can also... Yeah. Well, you have a spinny thing in air, and then your attack uh, can yeah, so, deflect projectiles. So, yeah, so your bat jump here... Um, that's basically Scrooge McDuck's pogo jump, or C equivalent. Except no. you can't hold uh, it, but yeah. No. You, like, it re It does require some actual skill to use. Like, um... But you can bounce off of pretty much anything with, with that. Like, um, it's not just... Like, you can bounce off that baseball... Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to bounce out those pogo uh, things in order to get the item. Yeah, uh, every level has a bunch of hidden, um, has like uh, three seeds and a cassette. Some levels have an animal hidden in them. And the most interesting dynamic in terms of attacking, uh, or at least basic attacking, is um, not just the projectile system, or you know you, the fact that you can reflect projectiles, but you can basically reflect other enemies. Um, you know, like when you hit one of these pigsies here, you know they unless when they're not up against the wall, they will spin and they will tumble, and what you'll want to do. With those, it, like it actually doesn't come up all that much, but you know, the more um, enemies they hit, the more gems you get. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, yeah, secrets can be hidden in a variety of ways. One of them is, you know, invisible walls, um, foreground there. objects. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes they're not hidden. Yeah, like, see here, this is teaching you how to bat back projectiles. And how you get those gems, you have to uh, bat jump off of the gems. And once again, you, you have to bat jump off the gems. Uh, in a nice modern touch... Um, falling and getting crushed by the screen and uh, things of that nature. You know, things that would outright kill you in an actual 8-bit game only damage you. So, this is far more uh, generous than your average NES game, if nothing else. Now, um, as far as, like, your upgrade moves goes, well, I won't... You know, I won't run them all down so people can discover all of the abilities, but, um, you know, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, like, the first thing you unlock is the air dash. Um, which is, um, one of the most useful moves you will get. Like, a lot of the, uh, things as that... As is common in any game that has an air dash. Mm-hmm. Um, another one of the, another one of the most useful ones is the grappling hook, which once again is, uh, very useful. Uh, what sport gives you a grappling hook? I forget. 
I said, um, I like as much as boasting as the game does with with your uh, with Ryosuke's uh, teammates. Mm-hmm. I genuinely found them uninteresting, like far less interesting than your average gaggle of Mega Man robot masters. Well, they don't really give you a chance to get to know them at all before they get well, off. Right. But I mean, you get a short scene. But here's the thing. They do get extra characterization. Um, because every time you confront one of them in a stage, they will talk. Yeah, you know, There will be a bunch of talking, and then you fight. And then here's the thing. Um Every you know every battle with um, your teammates has two phases. You know, which is unusual for a platform game, or most games. Like most games, don't usually have you know the regular bosses having multiple forms. Tinker Knight accepted. Hmm. Right. In this case, um, Azeroth, or, um, he's the exception. Like, when you fight him, he doesn't have um, more than one form. You just fight him multiple times. Yeah. Um. If I had a problem with the power-ups, it's a, a lot of the later ones, um, because they show up so late and uh, because this, you know, um, because this game does uh, a bit of the non-linearity, um, I'll be honest, I think this game should not have gone that route, ultimately. Um, because uh, non-linearity is not... <sighs> yeah, there was at least one thing in the first level that I uh, could not get back to. Yeah, and that's what I'm alluding to. Um, Because the power-ups aren't just, like, you know, better ways to attack. They're ways to move and get through levels. Um, And there are, like, there are a few challenge areas that um, really make use of your abilities. But the regular levels, um, because... You're locked to doing like two or three in a section, and then moving on to the next span of levels. And, you know, the developers could not account for, you know, powers that you may not have. That's, you know, I, you know, it's like, that's the problem with non-linearity. You can't build towards specific powers. Or if you do, they're optional. Like, you can see this as far back as the original Mega Man, when you had to get the Magnet Beam. Like, you were required to get the Magnet Beam. Tiered non-linearity is a little bit better, because then you can say, okay... By the time you've beaten these three stages, you will have these three power-ups, or before you get to, to this stage. Yeah. I think you so, can't okay. defeat the batters with uh, projectiles, or at least with rebelled projectiles. Uh, you have to play Ganon Tennis to do it. Yeah, but you can also just ignore that one. or get. But later on, you can get up in there. Not the pitchers. The pitchers you can, but when it's a pitcher with a batter standing in front of him. Like, um, anyway, what I'm getting at is, like, some of the later power-ups are very situational at best and uh, really didn't have enough time to get adequate usage, which is a a shame because I would have liked to have seen, um, more applicability in you know, actual level design. Uh, although I thought, like, the basketball power-up was just 
flat out bad. What's but, that? Just a bigger ball? Or a big ball you can no, hit? You spawn basketballs, and sometimes you can spawn like two or three of them. And a few times in the game, you use those to unlock a door. Be, uh, because you, you got to spawn a basketball on the left, and you got to spawn a basketball in the right and get the timing down right. Yeah, that yeah, sounds a little, a little obnoxious. It was. So I was glad that wasn't used more than like twice, I think. Um, more I'm speaking like the really interesting way they implemented the, the, uh, the double jump in this game. Because they tied it to a... They, they, tied, they tied it to pitching. Is that yeah. the this first stage power up that I've gotten? No, that's like no, th th um, that is the um, spinning bat, which you use to get an extra boost. Yeah, um, it's 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 an assisted double jump. You have to throw the bat and then jump off it. Uh, that's not the one I'm talking about. Okay, there there's a true double jump later. Well, it's it's the one that they specifically say you can use as a double jump. Like, um, yeah, so I guess there's a, there's a couple of, uh, double jumps, but there's not like a proper double jump. Like you can't just jump and jump again. Um, you jump and you use one of your powers basically. And the, and the thing with the powers is, um, they're limited. Um, you will get a stamina meter when you get your first power. And you can upgrade that via the seeds. That's what the seeds are for. They, they will uh, give you more health or more stamina. And, you know, that is your incentive for uh, seeking out the secrets in the levels. Or at least, though, the seeds. Like the sets, um, there's a jukebox where you can do the sound test. The music, um, it's the expected chip tunes. Um, some of them were real bangers. Some of them were just okay. Um, we can't all be Jake Kaufman. No, um, but like I said, the, you know, the music was on the whole fine. Um, yeah, it's not bad. It's just not, like, amazing. Yeah. Also worth noting that uh, there's not much of a penalty for dying here. Um, there's not even the uh, Shovel Knight, uh, Dark Souls, uh, losing money. Just lost progress. Uh, even then, like... You know, there's so many save points, and it doesn't even do uh, the Shovel Knight thing of risk-reward. Yeah, if I'm saying that this game isn't as good as Shovel Knight, I am. You know. I mean, that's not saying it's bad. Shovel Knight was exceptional. Yeah, you, sh you know, Shovel Knight's kind of top-tier retro revival uh, game, even to this day. And this game isn't quite up to that benchmark but it's you know it's really exceptional look we have played a lot of these games on the program and you know something like uh, v6 or shovel knight or celeste you know they're up at the top and well our not necessarily bottom but our measuring stick is more the land ass um, adaptations that uh, Radalikia are usually ported to consoles. Yeah, this game has character and good music and stuff. Yes. Um, but it does lack a bit in the personality of the department. And I bring this up because... I fear this game is going to get buried um, pretty hard. 
Because, you know, it's also... A Shovel Knight had the advantage of coming out in, like, uh, almost 10 years ago at this point. You know, when retro-styled games were far less common. I mean, they were still there. But, you know... Games doing eight 16-bit styles is just kind of part of the indie scene. Like, if you were ever tired of this retro throwback stuff, uh, it hasn't gone away. But it is more common. So it is a lot harder to stand out. Oh, you do get more than three strikes. That's uh, actually kind of weird. That's what that's what I was getting at. Um, the penalty for dying is very nominal. Like, and you don't like if you collect one of the collectibles, you uh, don't have to collect it again. In Which that is very sense, useful because some of them are obnoxious. <laughs> they are like. And, you know, this is one of the best games I've played this year. And, unfortunately, I think its fate is to be buried under a ton of uh, other nostalgia uh, bait that exists in the world. Especially uh, when it's coming out now, when there's a lot of um, not just big name releases, but even medium-sized names. Granted, they're not necessarily in this trajectory here. But, you know, it's been crowded in terms of game releases. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this game has the charisma to to stand out like Shovel Knight did back in the day. And that is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, not, not only does this game have character, it has quite a bit of its own character. Because uh, no, it's like, no, uh, using the bat isn't a wholly unique idea. Um, like, what came to mind for me was um, the game Monster Bash. Was I the only one who played this? Uh, it doesn't ring a bell. Well, maybe I'll, I don't know. Uh, let, let's just say um, the main, you know, one of the main characters, Mark, he used a bat as a weapon, and it worked, you know, a lot like this. Not entirely like by Apogee. No, um, by Bandai. Oh, um. No, I'd say the inspired part here is um, infusing the the bat mechanics with Mega Man and uh, Ducktales. Like, um, anyway. So, with that out of the way, in terms of pricing. The game clocks in at a affordable fourteen ninety nine. Uh, it does have the soundtrack available separately for four ninety nine, or in the package for seventeen ninety eight. I think fifteen dollars is the right price for this. Um, like I said, I would, you know, um, I couldn't say it stands toe to toe with the very tip top of this genre um, as previously mentioned but you know I will take this any day of the week uh, twice on Sundays over you know the generic you know the the neutral loaf that Rodalikia fed us over the years mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't even play those games for the most part but I can recognize blandness when I see it. 
This game isn't bland. It's mildly spicy. Uh, any qu other questions, comments, or concerns? I enjoyed the uh, relatively small amount I played. I'll probably come back to it. Uh, the controls are maybe could be a tiny bit snappier. Yeah, but it's I'd say good. the I'd say the other uh, problem is um, hand fatigue in some mm -hmm. of the levels, uh, like especially the goddamn factory. Uh, just jumping over and over and over again on certain objects got tiresome. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, that'll about do it for this review and the, this review session. So, coming up on the week ahead, let's see, on Wednesday, June 7th, we'll be having... I'm probably going to mispronounce this name, but we're going to be having uh, the Somber Pirok of Space Rock Games. Like I said, I, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing this right. I, I don't even know where this name originates from. Probably Schombor, but I don't know for sure. Whenever I see a Z and an S together, I usually assume it's a sh sound. Yeah. Um. And um, coming up on Friday, June 9th, well, we're supposed to have a representative from developer Tall Troll Games, but the fact that I, I can't name a person kind of shows you how far along this is. Like, so hopefully they get back to me on the next couple of days. Starting to get concerned there. Uh, we do have a new installment of MSP also happening this Wednesday. So until next time, I shall wish you good gaming.